Hello and thank you for joining another Horse Rider Pilates. It's all about the upper body today, which is going to help you with your position, your posture in the saddle, but also with developing and maintaining that strength, that precision, that control and consistency of your contact. So let's get going. Um, we're going to start off just here in sitting, think about being balanced through the whole body, so equal through your seat bones. That nice elastic spine, level but relaxed shoulders. Breathing into the base of your lungs and then allowing your head to turn from side to side, keeping your eyes level. Watch that you don't look down as you turn, you want your eyes to stay level. Remember your head is a seventh of your body weight. So you want really good control of your head and its movement, and its position, if the rest of your body is going to be able to follow and you're going to maintain that nice, elegant position. But also with your, when you're going over fences, you don't want your head to be flopping forwards. I mean, that's quite unlikely to happen, but you want to have good control over your head position at all times. Okay, then arms across your chest and into those turns through your whole body now. Focus on your seat bones as you do this. If you want to, you can close your eyes because that can help you with the focus. You take away all the visual distractions and you're just reliant on what you feel through your seat bones making sure the weight stays equal as you turn. Try to feel that you turn to the same degree both sides. If you're not sure if it's a weakness or a, a stiffness issue, you can uncross your legs, cross them the other way, and then do the same again. And if it feels a little bit easier now, it may be that you're slightly stiffer through your hip on one side, and that just blocks the movement, in which case working on your hip mobility on that side will probably help a little bit too. Okay, facing the front again, we're now going to turn onto your front and we're going to do your swan dive. This is such a good one for upper body strength and posture. So arms out to the side, elbows bent to 90 degrees. At home you want to be looking face down, I'm facing you so you can hear me better. Bring your tummy gently away from the imaginary puddle of water underneath you and draw your shoulder blades back and down so that pulls them away from the floor. Pelvic floor onto floor three. And we're going to start just by lifting through your head and neck. You'll note I'm staying looking down. You're not coming up in front, that blocks through your neck and upper body for this sort of movement. So you're looking down and your head and neck move as one unit. If you want to stay just doing this version, that's absolutely fine. It's still going to give you lots of strengthening benefit. If you want to do a little bit harder, Check that tummy position away from the puddle, pelvic floor onto floor three, and you're going to lift arms, head and neck together. Again, watch you don't look up and block through your neck. Arms, head and neck come off the floor together. Check your elbow position, where you see people, elbows leading the way on the way up and getting left hand on the way back down. Everything moves as one unit. Watch you don't sink through your tummy and end up hinging like this that upper body. If you find that your feet are joining in, you're trying too hard. So make the movement a little bit smaller. Make sure you're breathing. Do one more. Well done. Okie doke. We're going to move on to doing your leg pull in this position. So you're going to have your hands underneath you and look at your hands, try and keep your head in this position. Pelvic floor onto floor three. You're going to lift your pelvis and slowly back down. Pelvic floor into that lift, slowly back down. Keep your head and upper body where it is. Watch that you don't dip down as you go into that lift. So it's all about keeping stable through your upper body even though it's working quite hard to take your weight. If you want to make it harder, tuck your toes under your feet and you can then go lift pelvis, lift knees, lower knees, lower pelvis or you can do them both together. Doesn't matter, do what works best for you, particularly for your back. My back is happier doing both together um, but also it's got to be, it's got to feel easy so that you can control that position so that you don't land with a plop and you may find doing everything together you end up landing with a plop. So do what feels best for you Whatever happens, if you're doing both pelvis and knees, you want to end up in that nice plank position, not sagging, not with your bottom up in the air. 
and whichever one you're doing out of those three, again, head and neck stay still. You don't dip down as you go into the movement. Keep the pelvic floor if you can. Keep breathing. And you want that nice, controlled, consistent movement. Last one. Okie doke. Now then, you might have spotted that I have a resistance band. You haven't tuned into the wrong session. We're just going to use it, well I'm going to use it for this next exercise because I think it's helpful to have a little bit of feedback, um, just about hand position basically. So we're going to go onto your back and I'm going to hold the band in my hands and I just it's quite nice to have something other than just your hands to give you that feedback about are they truly level and balanced. So there's no tension on my band. All I'm going to do is reach my hands upwards and pull downwards. So I'm reaching upwards and my shoulder blades slide around my rib cage. I pull back down with my shoulder blades and they sink into the mat. So my hands are staying as level as I can make them. If they move apart, I'll create tension on the band. If they move in, then the band will go really floppy. So it's basically a neutral tension. So my hand distance stays the same all the way through. Keep your elbows straight, so all this movement is coming from the shoulders, from those shoulder blades. Those shoulder blades are so important, or the shoulder blade muscles, so important for your ability, for your arms to move freely, but under control with the horse. We'll do one more. Super. Okay, let's pop the band down for just a second. You're coming up into sitting and we're going to do your leg pull. So, hands out behind you. I find it best with my fingers pointing away, but do what's most comfortable for you, provided your hands are really behind you. Pelvic floor onto floor three. Open your hips like a hinge, slowly back down. So it's pelvic floor, open, slowly back down. If you're finding this really easy, you can do some of these. If you're finding it really hard because of your shoulders or your wrists, you can just stay in this position and do some of these instead. So vary it depending on, particularly on how your shoulders and wrists find this one. If you're going to do some of these ones, just make sure that your pelvis stays level as you add in the leg movements. Make sure you're breathing, whichever one you do. Last one with each leg, okay, and then bring yourself back down. And then we're going to come up into your oblique roll-up position. And again, I'm going to use this band. I've been experimenting with this a bit through the winter, and I found it makes a big difference to the precision of this. To be fair, I'm not sat on a flat surface, so it might be challenging. But you want to hold your hands again as if you were sort of holding reins. Your knees are probably a bit in the way, but hold the band, neutral tension on it, and then you're just going to do those little rock backs through your low back and pelvis. So remember, it's not the whole body like a glorified sit-up. Being precise to your low back and pelvis. Keeping your knees gently together and looking for that consistency of position through your hand. So looking at your band, the tension is staying neutral. You're not pulling with one hand, not up and down. You're not hands up coming in. That tension stays neutral all the time but you want your hands to be soft as well, so you're not gripping on. You want your hands to be soft no matter what the rest of your body is doing. Lovely, okie doke. Then we're going to pop that band down. Come back into your cross-legged position, or if that's not comfortable, into the frog legs position. Pop your arms up in front, and you want to have your imaginary headlights now glued to the front of your elbows. Rest your head onto your forearms and push your headlights forward. Watch they don't come down, they want to go straight forwards and then come back. So it's straight forwards and come back. This is a great exercise for mobilising your upper back. So if you get stiff in that area, this is a really useful exercise. Then see if you can scoop up at the end. So you go forwards and scoop up and then back off. Forwards, scoop up and back off. Then we're going to swap and pop 
your arm is the other way around so your bottom arm is now on top head back on and again those elbows go straight forwards so it's quite a good one for balance as well controlling your body all the way forwards and then see if you can add in that little scoop up at the end so forwards scoop your headlights upwards We'll do one more and then bring your arms back down by your sides check that you've got equal weight in your seat bones and then just loosen off relax around through your shoulders because they've just been working quite hard and we're going to finish there i hope that those exercises have been useful um i think it's always good to come and revisit what our hands are up to we do need to have good strength around here as a good base but you can't get away from being some focus on your strength around your shoulders and that awareness of what your hands are doing keeping them soft keeping them level keeping that consistent all the way through so try and take some of the things from this session into the next time you ride um, look after yourselves and i will see you in the next session bye bye